So it's the first week of summer where I'm at and I thought now would be a great time to give a spring garden tour. Um, we're on about a quarter of an acre here so we have a small garden in the front and behind me I've got a chicken coop and we've got a compost set up going here as well. That's about all we have in the backyard. So there's a, too much to see there. Um, eventually I plan to replace this, I don't even know what to call it, raised bed. It's just this pile of dirt kept in by these ugly big railroad ties and it's just full of bindweed. Right now it's just a holding place for all of our yard debris and logs before we can get it to a dump because their place is not big enough to burn it all unfortunately. So hopefully by the end of the summer we can get rid of that because it has some sun and that would be a nice way to expand our growing space because even in the front garden we don't have a ton of place where the sun hits and I'll show you all that. Um, so yeah we've got four Rhode Island red hens and and this is our first time having chickens. They haven't begun laying yet. So I'm pretty excited for that because they should be coming up on being fully grown. We're about to switch them over to layer feed, but yeah, we keep them in this pre-bought coop that we've added some upgrades to it. And we're gonna have a video on how we did that and what we think of the coop, what we would have done differently, and just how we're dealing with our first time of having chickens in general. You can definitely tell what area we have left behind, but it's cloudy right now, but normally this gets sun and it's a big amount of space that if we could, of course, get rid of the yard debris and pull up all these railroad ties and just put it all in the dump, or maybe we can salvage the dirt if we sort through it and find that the bindweed isn't as bad as I think it is, which I don't think it's going to happen. Um, we'd leave this row of trees here as well, but we could put in maybe some sort of water feature or some more growing beds that we could fence off from the chickens. That would be great. The biggest issue right now, the potatoes are being eaten live by aphids. We've kind of let them go once we figured out that building a potato box is actually a trick. It's a myth. Um, we saw it all over Pinterest and online and we thought that of course it would work. Why wouldn't it? Why would people be doing it? Why would there be diagrams? But from everything we've read and from what we've seen is that you're not going to get a very good yield like you would if you traditionally hilled up the tomatoes or sorry, the potatoes on the ground. Um, what we did is we actually made it worse because we put a bottom on the box because we were trying originally going to plant it in that bindweed area I was talking about. And because there's a bottom on it, but because we put the tomato, the potatoes in um, such a shallow and probably like six, eight inches of dirt, if that, in the bottom level there, that's about all we're going to get. All we did was just increase the foliage and the plant every time we added more dirt. If you've um, read about what happens when you do a potato box. The idea is that you add another level and once the foliage gets big enough you cover it up to a certain amount but the plant is spending all of its time trying to reach the sunlight and trying to grow up the foliage that it's not actually growing any tubers and it doesn't work like that. It's not just going to shoot more tubers out of the stalk so unfortunately we just have a lot of leaves. Um, we're afraid to crack it open but we're still waiting for the foliage to die off like you're supposed to to harvest the potatoes, but yeah, it's kind of a lost cause. So next year we'll we'll see if we can find some space for some actual proper potatoes, but in the meantime, at least it looks cute. So when you first walk into the garden, um, Originally it was just these pathways along here, but we ended up putting in two beds this year. We have the large bed that's next to me, and then we also have the smaller bed which I've used for flowers. So I've got sunflowers along the back row, and these are baby's breath. And I've also got some mums that sprouted, and I planted black-eyed Susans as well as coneflowers. 
and neither of those seem to show up. I know they're perennials, or at least coneflowers are, so maybe they'll show up at some point, but I didn't do a very good job. I started planting it in rows, and then I just started throwing the seeds everywhere because I was afraid that the seeds would never come up. And well, as you can see, the baby's breath took over. So we have lettuce along the front row here, and we have five of them. We originally had six, but that one over there, um, a squirrel had pulled it up. We assume it was a squirrel, and I planted it back, and it got to about half this size before it just decided to die off. I'm not sure why it took so long to die off, but oh well. Um, we've been trimming from these to make salads, and they're actually starting to become heads. Originally this bed was filled with herbs, but I just ripped it up because the herbs were not doing so well. Back there we had some parsley that we pulled from another bed that just showed up on its own, something that the previous owners must have planted. And it did really well, but I got everything here got overwatered. You can still see the ones that I didn't pull. They're pink and yellow, and that's generally a sign of being overwatered. And we tried to do a lot of research on companion planting, but I think that we just assumed all herbs would go well together. And um, we had cilantro next to the parsley that had the same problem. It just started drooping. And the dill did okay, but again, it's pink and yellow. And we realized that we don't even use herbs that much. So next year, because this is our biggest bed, and it's too valuable of a space for something that we're just not going to use. We're not going to plant herbs here. We're going to do some sort of bigger vegetables that we would actually eat and get use out of. Um, we had basil there, and there's some time left. And I've actually since moved, I was able to rescue some of those and put in these pots because hopefully they will be happier like our rosemary. We barely water that, and that bed is booming. I'm hoping that they'll be happier and drier and the weather is getting warm so it'll be it doesn't get too hot here so like 70s 80s and we won't water them as much i'm hoping that they can they'll grow the time has just stayed about the same size it hasn't really exploded but it hasn't really died we're only growing from seed because when we do have land someday that's what's most economical um I hear a lot of advice like, oh, it's just better you know, if your peppers aren't doing well. Peppers are better to just, you buy those from starts and you grow those. And that's because they need to be in a hot, dry environment like a greenhouse. And we can't, we don't have room for a greenhouse here, somewhere that would be sunny. So um, I'll get to the peppers later. But yeah, my sentiment is that I want to learn to grow from seed because that's what's going to be most valuable for me here. So if I lose out on a few plants, that's okay because it's helping to educate me for the future when I'm going to try to feed myself from my garden. So with all this space, because we're in mid to the end of June, um, I actually went ahead and planted a row of corn here. So we're going to try to do the three sisters method. It was decided at the last minute, so don't judge me too much because I don't have a ton of information on it. But So these chives, we actually did end up buying from a local nursery we went there looking for a few plants to fill out this space over here because it's just it was all empty along the back wall um, i actually got these galvanized buckets i think i got them from tractor supply yeah i got them from tractor supply they were pretty cheap and i use a method where you take toilet bowl cleaner to give them that rustic antique look because I found containers were just so expensive. Then we've got the middle section here and these beds were all here when we moved in. Um, this was actually on the front here. We moved it back because we thought that the tomatoes would end up shading a lot of the plants. Um, behind the dog are the two, two beds that we built. So all of these herbs, this is rosemary, sage, oregano, and then somewhere among here is mint. It's interesting to see the battle of mint and oregano are both notorious for taking each other over. And the oregano has been doing a pretty good job, but so has the mint. And again, we've harvested these twice now. The 
oregano has just taken over into the gravel. I've kind of let it happen because it smells good. I think it gives it a little bit of rustic charm, but yeah, this is just overflowing. We're probably just going to leave this as is. Um, we try to prevent it from flowering, if anything, but mostly we just clip it back and it, it comes back on its own. Then in the middle, in the trellis, we have three different snap peas growing. This one is doing the best. And I've just been coming out frequently and tying it with some twine whenever it needs it. But these actually already are getting some peas on them, which is nice to see. We're probably going to try some canning for that. Chris has tried a little bit of pickling before, but we haven't done canning too much as a preservation method. And this is a pole bean. We meant to plant two pole beans and two snap peas, but it's just how it ended up is that we ended up with three. A couple little beans here. This one was slow to start, probably because it's competing with all these herbs. And we did cut back to give it some space, but obviously the herbs took over. At least it smells really good, but we have spinach, onions, and broccoli in this one. The spinach is, is strange variety. I'm going to have to look the name of it up and put it in later, but it's this heat resistant spinach. Um, I think it's like Norwegian spinach or something, but it doesn't taste very good. It was a mistake buying it because we're not in a hot area. Like it's 70 degrees right now. I didn't even get to 90 degrees last summer, but yeah, it's, it's just bitter. I'm not sure if this is aphids or but it's starting to yellow. We're going to let it do its thing, but probably come August, we're going to plant a regular spinach. Um, I'll put the name of that one as well once I figure out what it is. And we're going to replace it for a fall crop. And then this is our first time growing onions too. So they seem to do pretty well. Um, I haven't mentioned this, but we did start, I think almost everything we started indoors back in February. And that was a bit interesting because we put stuff out too soon. We're in, this is our third year living in the Pacific Northwest and we underestimated the frost so we had a lot of late frost here and we did you can kind of see in the back there we did build a cold frame for one of the beds and we had glass coverings like mason jars plastic bottles what have you to try to keep stuff warm um I'll talk about what ones died off and whatnot we started some more indoors but everything actually kind of came back they're a little bit stunted and you can see the effects of that but yeah the onions we put out at the proper time some of them are bigger than others i think it's because we didn't thin them properly which is another big mistake that we've been learning is i'm just afraid of thinning stuff it's really hard to do i I'm afraid that I'm not planting enough seedlings to start, so I plant a lot of them and then they're overcrowded and they can't grow. So you have some more flowers and another galvanized bucket project here from Tractor Supply. And here's the broccoli. It's been getting eaten up pretty badly. We've had like every pest in the book. I come out here, we have sluggo and neem oil, insecticidal soap. Some of these you can see are planted too close together. They're just not the greatest looking. They're not awful. And then along this back wall here, which doesn't get a ton of sun, we have three blueberries that we bought these. You know, blueberries can take a while and we wanted to get some, just some color and some fruit in the garden. Um, this one is looking like it's got some black spot or something, but they're two different kinds one is like pink pink lemonade blueberry again i'm terrible with the names and i need to look the stuff up but yeah i treated this one with fungicide i actually sprayed them all but they had flowers and there's a couple little blueberries on there um, i actually went ahead and put some bird netting over it and we have bird netting over the whole garden to protect from squirrels so in the next bed we have lettuce, carrots, and broccoli. And this was one of the lettuces, I think it might be just this one. I know it's for sure this one that we had out 
during the frost and it looked like it was gonna die off but it came back it, it's a little wrinkly it looks like it actually sprouted a second one so it's two different lettuces but we've been eating from it just fine and this is our garlic we have some more garlic over there as well now i've read that you need about 10 leaves before they're ready to harvest well 10 leaves and then half of those leaves have to start turning yellow and dying off in the bottom so each of these has about 10 leaves now so they just need to start dying off in the bottom so we're getting close to having the garlic so i'm excited about that and here are the carrots that we pulled a few weeks ago um they're definitely looking bigger and this one's popping out of the ground. It's probably still really short. I think we actually started them indoors too. And I've seen people say that you should just start those, sow those directly. But we're going to work on our spacing. And then we've got Brussels sprouts. And the Brussels sprouts have undergone total warfare with these big cabbage worms. So we have four of those. One's kind of just thrown oddly in between them but they do are doing okay um the leaves are recovering but yeah i've been treating them with insecticidal soap and neem oil and whatnot but yeah hopefully those turn out okay because that would be a really interesting crop to have so this one's our biggest and you can see where the leaves have been getting eaten and this one got eaten the most we have a lot of leaves that got pulled off that one has been doing okay, but yeah, they got pretty heavily beaten up. And this is another snap pea. This one, I don't know why. This one was doing the best. It was grew like crazy when we started it indoors. It grew like crazy out here, and then it just stopped. I don't know if it's lack of water when we implemented this soaker hose irrigation because there isn't really water here. But I've been coming out here and watering it, but. I think it just happens I'm not sure but yeah both of the other snap peas are doing a lot better than this one is but hey it still has a few peas on it so we'll call that a win and then the last bed behind me here is cabbage garlic peppers garlic and then cherry tomatoes on the back there and then of course we have the snap pea so the cabbage was not eaten as badly by the caterpillars or worms, whatever you want to call them. But yeah, they definitely have, it's our broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage that all have been getting eaten by the same pest. And yeah, this garlic has been doing pretty well. I think it's a bit crowded here. You can see which ones are happier just based on the thickness of their stalk and the peppers our first batch of peppers died off in the frost we just they were with all of our other seedlings and i don't know what we were thinking excuse all these weeds um we just threw them out there and they died off but yeah it's just not it doesn't seem to be hot enough here or something but i threw these water bottles over the other day um, i haven't seen any change yet but i'm hoping with the warmer weather and the water bottles will help and these are the cherry tomatoes. I think I planted it a little bit far from the trellis. So I've kind of just been sticking it back in when I can. But it's definitely leaning towards that way. It's got a few flowers, but it's certainly slow to start. But I think it still has some time. I'm hoping that with the hot weather, again, it'll burst up. But that one's definitely doing better than the other one. And this is a hydrangea I tried to salvage from the front where there was too much shade. It hasn't grown any flowers yet, but it's alive, so that's good. And then in addition to the tomatoes on the roof, we have two tomatoes along this wall here, but they're just not happy. This one actually has some fruit on it, but um, the tomatoes that are up top are like five times the size of this and are just barely starting to grow fruit because I think it's expending all of its energy on the fruit versus getting bigger but and this one we waited way too long to put out and it's just drooping sad um, I'm not sure how the soil is over here as well because there's tarp 
and then there's mulch on top obviously we ripped up the tar tarp to plant them we added tomato fertilizer and compost but yeah it's just not a great spot it's a shame because i don't know what to do with this back wall over here especially with this fence but yeah it just doesn't get a ton of not until the second half of the day there's their sunlight this is mostly shaded but we just have sunlight along the middle strip of the garden That's about it for the main garden down here. I will go up on the roof and show you the five potted tomato plants that we have up there. They're doing pretty well because they have space. They have plenty of sunlight on the flat roof deck that we have um, versus being here in the garden and we're much more controlled environment being in a pot. But yeah, we have the four main beds. We have two fruit trees. We have a couple fruits along the back wall, some ornamentals, and then we have the two beds that we added, the one, big one that's behind me and the flower bed. Okay, so now I'm out on the roof where we've got the five potted tomato plants. Um, so I just put fertilizer in them last night. I definitely did too much because I read the established plants versus new plants instead of potted plants versus established plants. Um, there's a bit of water leakage now because I just watered them with the drip irrigation system that we set up in the last video. I'm gonna let the cat out. <laughs> got quite a few flowers this one's doing really well um, we've been we started trimming at the bottom there to try to get more airflow in them but we let them go on a little bit longer than we should have so these two were showing a lot of signs of disease this one was the smallest to begin with because it was back here which has more shade during the earlier parts of the day um, so it does have flowers it looks okay now we cut it about two three days ago any signs of disease and we just put them in a trash bag hopefully it does okay now that it's got more sun since we moved it we spread these these two out we're looking the most diseased i don't think these had too much sign of disease on them um we're getting a little bit of leaf curl but i think that's just because of the heat that they're not quite used to it yet another sign disease so I've just been going in and plucking these off hopefully these plants are salvageable um, we thinking they're gonna get you know two three times the size that they are now I hope I'm not quite sure if that's going to happen but um, we did buy a a strainer so we can make sauce, we can can them. Um, I'm going to make a dryer as well so we can have sun dried tomatoes, which will be really fun. Um, that's if we get tomatoes though, but um, yeah, it's a toss up. I know that tomatoes are popular to grow, but they're definitely not easy. It seems like they're very disease prone. Um, the drip irrigation is doing okay for them but they're big they've got flowers they've got fruit um three out of five don't have signs of disease so i'd say that's pretty good for now